Welcome back guys. Today is day two, which will in fact be part three of the engine rebuild, the small block Chev for Project Dale. Today we're going to button up the rotating assembly, so stay tuned. So because it is such a nice day, I think we're going to work in the shop today with the garage door open, let some of that nice warm air fill the garage. And the job today is going to be getting all eight pistons installed into the block, clearanced and ready to roll. We're going to try and button this thing up today as far as the rotating assembly. We might get the oil pump and the uh, base pan on. Uh, and then the next video likely will be putting the top end together. So before we do that, we've got to fix one little mistake that woke me up at about 2.30 this morning. And that was realizing that when I put the crank in yesterday, although I lubed all the journals, I did not grease the rear main seal. So I'm going to try a couple of things before we go too much further, but it's looking like I may have to pull the crank out, um, grease that seal and then put it back together. So let's, uh, let's start with that today. It should only take a few minutes. We know exactly what we've got to do. Uh, everything is ready to roll so let's get that rear cap off and see if maybe we can just kind of grease it up from this side and rotate it if not we're going to pull the whole thing so we've got that fixed up i'm fairly confident that i can get it oiled um, without having to take the whole crank out uh, i spun it up and the oil was kind of coming through the whole thing i'm confident it's not going to give us any issues so We've just uh, fixed that and we've bolted it down and torqued it back into place. So now we're gonna start by getting the pistons installed and getting them clearance, which means we've gotta clean our rod journals here, keep them dry, use the plastic gauge, install the piston, measure the clearance, make sure there's enough clearance there for that. So we're gonna grab the uh, bearings and a piston and we're gonna try and get that up inside the block with our um, ring compressing tool which means we've got to install the rings on the pistons as well so let's grab the box of rings and get those installed so probably the most tedious part of putting an engine together is gapping the rings and making sure that the rings that go around the piston are gapped properly for each cylinder so there are three sets of rings the top two you've got to gap make sure that they're going to fit in there and the the spacing between the ends is the right spacing based on what the recommendations are and uh, basically looking between 12 and 20 on the feeler gauge here so what you've got to do is you've got to take your top ring install it into the piston and then i'm going to take the piston itself and just kind of give a little tap in there that way you know it's sitting flush. And then you take your feeler on the gap. This one is um, 12 and it fits in there and 20 does not. So it's a little tight, but it's between the range. I think we're gonna be fine. So we've got to do that for the rings on each cylinder, so that's eight times per ring, 16 times. Then we've got to fit them onto the grooves in the piston. This one I've already done, and I've got the ring compressor already installed. So this is number one cylinder is ready to be installed and have the clearance checked. But we're gonna go ahead and do all the rings first, which is gonna be a little bit time consuming, so I'm not gonna bore you with that. I'll come back when we're ready to start pounding those pistons in place. So at this point, this is where it gets really fun. It's recommended that you dip the head of the piston in oil so that it lubricates these rings before you put them in. So while it's lubricated, you then have to put the ring compressor on, fun, and get everything situated so that you can put the piston in. Meanwhile, everything's covered in oil. So. Uh, Sit back, relax, and uh, maybe have a good laugh. And we do have our little 
piece is a rubber hose there so that when it goes down into the cylinder it's not going to nick uh, the journals on the way down. So remember we've got this little dot that's telling us that that has to face forward. Um, so let's, uh, let's try this. So that's going to sit just like that. We're going to take the wooden end of our hammer and we're going to tap that down in there. happens folks the ring compressor slid off of these rings and allowed them to expand out before I could pound that down any further so we get to try again get all practice up for the other seven so there's one down Seven more to go, um, but before we do that, we're going to flip this around and we're going to check the clearance on the journal on the bottom with those bearings and uh, see how we are. So now what we can do is we can take our piston and push it the rest of the way in so it's up against that and then we'll take off our little rubber protectors. So there's our mark on the cap bearing. And then we've got a mark down here as well on the journal. And with our precise measuring tool, we are once again within spec. So we'll clean this off. We'll get ready for cylinder number two, and then we can button everything up. Let's do it. Okay, so we've got all eight pistons installed with the rings, caps, everything is buttoned up and it's torqued to spec. And I've also got my oil pump mounted as well. The only thing we've got to do is set the height of the oil sump and uh, we're going to do that by basically leaving this piece here loose and pointed up a little bit and then we're going to take our oil pan, stick it on there and push the oil pan down till it's all the way down. That way we know that this is going, is going to go as far as it can and when we take the pan off we'll just push it down maybe another quarter inch or so and that way it's not hitting the bottom of the pan. So once we get that done, we will tack it in place so that it does not move after that. And then we can start laying our gaskets down and getting the bottom end buttoned up with the oil pan. Then we'll move on to the top half. Uh, we'll start putting uh, head gaskets, heads, intake, all that good stuff on the upside. And we'll do that actually in the next video. But for now, Let's get that oil pan in place and uh, make sure that we've got enough clearance for our oil pump. So it's actually hitting right about there and we've got to go down a little ways further. So all we're going to do is push that all the way down. So now we know that the uh, oil sump is probably touching the inside of the pan, so we'll lift this off. And then we're just going to take that and push it down just a hair more. That way it's not rubbing and it's not going to make any noise, it's not going to be chafing on the bottom of the pan. So now that we've done that, we're just going to stick a little spot of weld right there. That way we know it's not going to move. Then we can start putting our gaskets in and uh, button up the bottom end.
So now that we've got that done, I was getting a little bit ahead of myself. We first got to put the timing gears and timing chain on, timing cover, then we can put the oil pan on and we're gonna call it quits for the day. So let's get those gears on there and get the timing set. So we gotta roll this thing over to top dead center. So we found this big 32 millimeter deep socket and it seems to fit right on there almost like it was meant to be. And I would say that's as far as we're going with it. So now we can get our chain and everything all set up. I would say that's gonna go in there just like so. like that. And now our engine should be in time as far as the camshaft and the crank. These two circles are pointing towards each other. That tells me I must have done something right. So we'll get these torqued up and then we'll come back and uh, get the timing cover put on. Well, I guess we've gone as far as we can go for the simple fact that I don't have the proper uh, oil pan gasket for this. The one that I have is different. The dipstick hold is on the wrong side as well as it's too big. It's made to fit the one piece rear main seal, um, which is a lot bigger than the one that I have. So I can't even flip it over because I got some oil squirted down in there. And if I flip it over, it's just gonna end up on the floor. So that's gonna conclude this video. I hope you guys enjoy watching uh, me put these uh, pistons in and uh, get the bottom end all tidied up. In the next video, like I said, we're gonna be working on the top half. So you're not gonna wanna miss that. Car Guy and Six Fan Show is every Thursday evening and it alternates between my channel and Grant Tommy, who is Straight Six Fan. I'll put his link right up there. And it's just a bunch of car guys talking cars. And uh, we occasionally have guests and we've got a big one coming up, so I'm not sure when that'll fit in. But nevertheless, the show starts at seven o'clock central, eight Eastern and nine local time. If you're into cars, stop by, have a chat. We generally have a little bit of fun. So having said all of that, guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you. God bless. We'll see you in the next video.